Python 3.8 introduced some new features. In this episode, I will discuss what features I think is important to know about. So let's get started. To work with Python 3.8, you have to first download Python 3.8 uh, from the python.org website. I already downloaded and installed in my Mac OS. So after downloading and installing Python 3.8, you can uh, open your Visual Studio Code Editor and in the terminal you can type Python 3 dash dash version to see that what version it is showing. So here it is showing 3.8.0. And another thing you have to do in Visual Studio Code Editor, currently uh, you see that at the bottom left corner there are different kind of Python versions. So when I open Visual Studio Code Editor, it, it was selected something different like 3.7 or something. But what I did, I just manually selected this Python 3.8.0 version here. So in that case, there is no error will be shown in the code editor. Otherwise, if you use something like Python 3.6 or other version, the walrus operator which is new to Python 3.8 will be shown as a error in the code editor. Python 3.8 introduced a new operator that is called walrus operator. So you have to type colon and equal sign together to make a walrus operator. So what does this walrus operator do? So basically walrus operator assign a value in a variable as part of a larger expression. So let me show you an example. So normally what we do, we type suppose a equal, equals 100 then print a and we write program like this way, right? So if I type python 3 and demo and it is showing 100. But you can uh, write this two line code in one line using this walrus operator. So let me show you. So print b walrus operator and suppose 99, okay? And if I run this program, you see now it is showing 99. So basically what does this walrus operator do? It basically assign the 99 value in this variable b and then the print function prints the value of this b variable to the terminal. So this is the functionality of walrus operator. Let me show you another example. So here I am defining a list 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and now what we do in normal case suppose we want to check that whether the list contains more than 4 items or not using an if logic. So what we do in normal case we first calculate the length of the list so using the len method len list and then we, ch we write an if logic if n greater than 4 then print a formatted string. A list is oversized oversized and then I can uh, show the value in save this file run this for run this program you see now it is showing list is oversized and I am seeing the value 5 because uh, there are total 5 items in this list and we are using an if logic that if the number of item greater than 4 then show this thing now using walrus operator we can short this line so first let uh, make this as a comment okay and let's retype again so here I am typing if n uh, n walrus operator then len list uh, greater than 4 then what I want to do and to just pin this line so I just copy paste this line and print it in here okay save this file again clear the skin and let's run this program again and you see it is showing the same output so list is oversized and the value 5 so these two line using this walrus operator i can make it one line so this is the new feature in python 3.8 the second noticeable improvement of python 3.8 is called positional only parameters so normally if we use both positional and keyword arguments in a function called you have to use positional argument first and then keyword arguments that's the basically rule okay so let me show an example so i define a function first the function name is def output a b c uh, it can take three parameters and it will print that a b c okay and now let's call this function by output then one two and c equals four so here what i am doing i am mixing positional and keyword arguments so let's run this program you see it is showing perfectly fine 1, 2 and 4, okay? But if you want that some function parameter only can be used as positionally not as keyword argument. 
you can mark those parameters by using a forward slash syntax. That means you are basically forcing that some parameters cannot be used as a keyword argument. So here I did not mention any of those such things, but, but that is because that is a new feature in Python 3.8. So I can use uh, this function as 1 to 4, this totally positional argument I am passing or I can use this function, function uh, called like this way b equal to 2, c equal to 3, perfectly fine. But now what I want to do, I want to provide a forward slash here after this b and now suppose I call uh, this is 2 and c suppose uh, 5 and let's run this program again. So it's perfectly working, okay. But if I type b equals 2 here and run this program, you see it is showing an error. But if I remove this forward slash from here, clear the screen and run this program again, you see it's perfectly fine. So this is basically before Python 3.8 and Python 3.8 introduced a new forward slash operator. So that means that you cannot use a, b as a keyword argument. So it must have to be used as a uh, positional argument, okay. So you have to remove this b equals 2, c uh, equals 5 is perfectly fine and if you run this program, it's working. So now the question comes why this feature is introduced in Python 3.8. Basically to improve the readability of a function, the function writer intentionally did that, okay. So for example, there is a built-in function, len function is designed as positional argument only. So if you call len function like this, it will not work. So let me show the example. So suppose I type print and len, len function basically uh, contains, you see here is the function definition that you have, you can pass an object. So if I type object equals suppose high and save this program and run, you see it is showing an error. Because though I am seeing that len function has a function definition that can take a parameter name object, but len function is designed such a way that it can only take positional argument. So that makes or improves the readability. So if I remove this object part, the keyword part and just use the positional argument part, you see it's working perfectly fine and it sounds better that print len high. So when you are going to use len function, you can easily understand that this function returns the length of a string. So this improves the readability. Another benefit of using parameter as positional only is that in future, suppose you want to change the parameter name and it will not break the client code because you define the function as a positional or positional only argument. So for example, if the author of the len function, if he change the object name here with something different like object one or object two, whatever he wants, but as you are forcing to use this as a positional argument, it will not break your code. So that's the good thing about positional only argument. Another improvement in Python 3.8 is f strings is now updated. So basically f string were introduced in Python 3.6 and in Python version 3.8 f, string, f strings are updated again. So normally what we can do using f string is we can use literal variable even expression within the string in curly braces. For example, num equals 97.80 and I can use the f string by uh, mentioning f then single quotes or double quote that num is and then I can use curly braces num and within this curly braces I can use expression literal. So here I am using num into 2 and then I am putting a colon sign. 0.2f so that I want to format as a two digit through floating point digit. So if I run this program Python 3 and then demo, you see it is showing 195.60. Okay. So using f string, we can uh, we can use variable or literal within a string. So if you never saw this colon 0.2f before, it basically used it's basically called a format specifier and which means that the output floating point number should not exceed two digits. So here I am seeing two digit, but if I do not use this format specifier and if I run this program again, 
you see it is now showing only one digit and if there is uh, after calculation if there have many digit it will show that okay by using the uh, colon and the format specifier you fix the digit after the floating point number now in the f string we can use walrus operator to create a new variable as well but you have to use surrounding parenthesis in this kind of expression so this is the normal case now i am showing you the 3.8 case so i am defining a variable num equals 10 then print format string f and then sum and here curly braces and then if i as i want to use the walrus operator so what i have to do i have to use the parenthesis okay then sum then walrus operator num okay and then i am uh, typing another line so i just copy this print function here sum and then here i want to show plus 2 sum plus 2 and here what i want to do sum equals sum plus 2 okay save this file clear the screen and let's run this program you see here it is showing sum equals 10 basically i defined a variable num equals 10 and here in this expression sum is now 10 and then i am seeing the output by the pin function and in this expression sum basically created and the value of 10 is assigned to that sum variable and in the fifth line when i type again print sum plus 2 and here in the uh, within the f string i am calculating that sum walrus operator sum plus 2 then what does that mean is that that sum equals sum plus 2 so previously the value of sum was 10 and now i am adding 2 and total 12 and now sum is updated to 12 and finally i am seeing the print of the print value of this sum variable so this is the new addition in here as well that we can use walrus operator in f uh, string another interesting f string feature of python 3.8 is we can now use equal sign at the end of the expression to see the output of the result and the expression so for example here what i want to do print f formatted string then num and then i if i just put a equal sign here and let's run this program you see now it is showing num equals 10 so normally what i have to do if i just remove this equal sign and run this program again you see it is just showing 10 and normally what we when we debug what we type like this num equals save right so num equals 10 but now python 3.8 introduced this new feature that after the variable or expression if you put a equal sign and run this program you will see that the variable name is variable name or expression is also printed let me show you another example print formatted string curly braces and then parenthesis sum walrus operator 2 plus 2 and after this parenthesis equal sign let's run this program again you see now it is showing sum walrus operator 2 plus 2 equals 4 so as i put this equal sign after this parenthesis because i have to use this parenthesis because i am using a walrus operator inside the f string okay so uh, as i put this equal sign after the parenthesis now i can see the expression in the output so i do not have to retype everything so that basically uh, helps us to less writing okay Python is very popular for less verbose programming language. So this kind of feature basically improves to write programming shorter. Python 3.8 also improves some mathematic function. So for multiplicative product, you can now use math.prot function. So at first you have to import the math library in your program. Then suppose I want to type result equals math.prot and here I can pass a set of values 2, 3, 4, and if I print the result let's run this program you see it is showing the multiplication of all of these items that is 120 so basically if you have the factors okay the factors stored in a list or set using the math.prod function you can easily calculate the result Another function introduced in is math.i squared to find out the integer part of a square root. Okay, so here num equals 17. So I, I am printing print math.sqrt num and then the new function print math.isqrt 
t and here I am typing num again and if I run this program you see at the first cases normally square root of function basically uh, give us the square root of the input right but when you use i squared it basically returns the integer part of the square root of the input so we are seeing here 4 there are some other functions introduced in math library so basically if you use n dimensional point and vectors you can now easily calculate the distance between two points using math.dist and the length of a vector using math.hypot function so let's define an object suppose a uh, point a the value it contains 24 it's a tuple 50 40 and point b another tuple 12 25 and 30 okay now i want to uh, calculate the distance between these two points so what i have to type print a formatted string and here i want to use I want to use the math.dist function which is introduced in python 3.8 and I will be passing point A and point B okay and I also want to put a equal sign here so that I can see the expression in the terminal I want to calculate the length of a vector okay so for example print formatted string and again curly braces math.hypot function and here here you see they are basically you can give the value x or y or the coordinate using the star okay so i am passing the star and point a because i have the coordinate in here and i want to calculate the length of this point a vector and also after the parenthesis i put the equal sign to see the expression so let's clear this output and run this program again so here you are seeing that I am seeing the distance between point A and point B and I am seeing the length of point A by using the math.hypot function. Python 3.8 improves some statistics function. So now you can use those function to do some statistics type of work. So some functions name like statistics for so first you have to import the library of statistics and then you can see the improve uh, new functions are uh, statistics dot f mean then statistics dot uh, geometric mean then uh, new function is statistics dot multi mode and finally uh, statistics statistics dot uh, quant tiles okay so there are four uh, function i saw so basically statistics dot f mean function calculate the mean of a floating point number and geometric mean this function calculate the geometric mean of floating point number so if you know statistics you can understand this concept and the multi mode function basically finds the most frequently occurring values in a sequence and finally the quantize calculate the cut points for dividing data into n continuous interval with equal probability so here i import this library statistic at top of the my program and let's define a, a variable data that contains a sequence of number okay sequence of data uh, as a list and now let's uh, call the print function so a formatted print function and i want to call statistics dot f mean here within curly braces statistics of f mean i want to pass data and then the equal sign okay and let's copy this uh, line to another three times paste 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 and here i want to use geometric mean here i want to use the multi mode and the quantiles and when you use quantiles you have to uh, you have to pass uh, another variable that the the dividing into n continuous interval so you have to pass a n variable so here i am passing n equals 3 and if you just uh, click the function and you see that the function definition you get the idea that what type of uh, variable or data you have to pass okay so let's uh, clear the screen and run this program and here you see that you are getting the statistics data of this sequence by the following function there are some other features changed or improved in python 3.8 so if you want to know more about python 3.8 you can see the official documentation 
सो दैट्स इट फॉर टुडे थैंक यू फॉर वाचिंग एंड आई होप टू सी यू अगेन इन माय नेक्स्ट वीडियो